this may be a God moment, but I, I don't know what came over me, but I just sort of said to him, look, not once have I ever preached to you. Not once have I told you about God. Not once have I told you about, about Jesus. Not once have I told you to change your lifestyle. But I've had to sit here every Monday and listen to you preach to me about how many women that you scored on the weekend, how much alcohol you consumed and how much drugs you take took. So don't you start having a shot at me. And I, and not once have I ever told you not to stop telling those stories. Wow. That's... And he goes, no, oh, fair enough. <laughs> And we're best mates. Welcome to the Yes He Is podcast, where we talk about sharing your faith with confidence so that you can play your part in helping the world know Jesus. Well, welcome to the Yes He Is podcast. We're here for another day, another pod. I'm here with Mark. What's happening? <coughs> and Mark's just got to clear his voice. So I'll just go on to introduce Mike Winnington, who is our illustrious guest today. Yeah. G'day, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you. Mark. Great to be here. Come on. Hey. What a pleasure. Hey. You're with us now, Mark? Yeah, sorry. I don't That's know what great. happened. Yeah, you just had a... Bit of phlegm. Bit of phlegm. That's yeah. okay. That's all right. You didn't do your warm-ups this morning. I didn't do my warm-ups. Warm me, 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 me. I'm That's better right. now. Yep. Yeah, great. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, yeah, we're here with Mike, and Mike is a local pastor. He's a dad. He... What else do you do, Mike? You run a... You're a uh, teacher at a Bible college. Yeah. And wow. Teach Bible college. Um um, I run all the pastoral care um, for the church that I'm a part of, uh, look after that, uh, yeah. run all the courses, uh, things like that. I have a family, um, as you said, um, th three uh, three kids. Um, my wife, Odette, uh, she's national head of HR for a company that uh, – oh. so she travels around all is over. Is she French? Eh? Is she French? No, but her name is. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it sounded French. Yeah. Yeah. No, she doesn't really like a name because it means homemaker. So, uh, ah, right. okay. so like, you know, so get, she's uh, like, screw it, so I'm going to head up uh, HR. Well, that was going to be my next, massive company. Uh, 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 that's going to be my next question, though, because like, having a wife yeah. who's a yeah. HR manager must be an interesting, like, you know, is yeah, it she like, manages us very really well. Does she? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but, or is it well, the opposite? Like a plumber has leaky pipes. Uh, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. She, she manages us very really well. Let's go into their uh, marriage. Yeah, I feel like uh, this, yeah. this is we're going time deep and place. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're in pastoral care. You're used yeah, to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, not a, it's not a marriage podcast, but it is a it is an evangelism podcast. All right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to have a laugh. No, no, yeah. No, I was trying to have a segue. I wasn't calling you out. All right. Sorry. No, but the, that's the reason we got Mike in is because you've, you know, you are in church ministry, you're a pastor, but you've had like a, a history of being in the trades yep. and a um, whole bunch of fun experiences yeah. that we're going to chat about today, yep. I think. So, um, yeah. No, what kind of trades? Um, so scaffolding yeah. is the um, main trade and uh, I grew up sheep farming in New Zealand, so... So you're a Kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I, I've got a great um, – have you heard the joke about the, the Kiwi space program? <laughs> no. You haven't? <laughs> I swear you would have heard this. What, what's the reason that the Kiwis never got into space? I don't know. They ran out of scaffolding. Uh, <laughs> I swear. I, I nah, thought, never heard it. it <laughs> what? I feel like that the British part of me doesn't get this. Why, well, why is that funny? Well, apparently in Australia – there's a lot of Kiwi scaffolding. Yeah, that's correct. Is that? Uh, okay. Like, uh, and I'm the typical Kiwi, like I grew up sheep farming, so yep. I've got yeah. that background. <laughs> so sheep and <laughs> scaffolding is a Kiwi she, thing. Is a Kiwi that's, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I thought I'd get more laughs from that, but I think um, <laughs> it, it, was good, it was good for you to unpack that, just even for our international listeners who probably didn't laugh either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't cut it. Anyway, <laughs> it's a funny joke because imagine just Kiwis being like, oh, we could put enough scaffolding together to get, get to, to the moon. moon. Yeah. Or now to, you're explaining the joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if okay. you want to laugh now, <laughs> now's the time. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I grew up on a sheep farm. Yeah. High country, New Zealand. Uh, moved to Australia. Um, dad was uh, a minister, local minister. Uh, moved to Australia. He was uh, became a Bible college lecturer over here for a large church. Yeah, and so and you were a Christian, like sort of. Nah, growing nah, up or nah, no, no. Nah, well, grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. Um, my my grandparents were missionaries. My parents were pastors. Um, I wow. was uh, uh, grew up in the Christian home, so yeah. um, church every Sunday. 
um, and uh, and that, but not until uh, late teens. Um, what yeah. happened? Um, well, first of all, I, I remember looking at a picture of Jesus in my grandmother's Bible, and um, and thinking, um, I hear these stories about him being this great shepherd, and um, and in my grandma's Bible, I actually thought he could have been my girlfriend <laughs> if he didn't have the bed. <laughs> Um, yeah, the blonde Everything. hair, blonde hair, blue eyes type thing, and um, and I'm thinking that's no that's she- so messed up. <laughs> that's no shepherd. <laughs> um, I know what a shepherd looks like. Um, yeah. You know, growing up, because oh, at- you were you we were, were a sheep yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And I was I, like, wow, that's um, not a shepherd. I've worked, <laughs> a shepherd. I've worked in a sharing shed, and uh, yeah, shepherds and, don't look like that. No. <laughs> And um, that's so funny. And so um, that was a bit of a stumbling block. I was like, I don't didn't really want to follow. Didn't seem like someone to follow. No, yeah. um, uh, it's from my context, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and you know, teenage years, you know, you just um, and farming and uh, hunting and, and different things like that. It's um, it's more fun doing that than you know. Going to Bible Sitting school. Or, yeah. <laughs> He's so manly. Uh, um, He's so manly. I feel like Mike's the manliest. Guest we've ever had, right. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Typically, typically. Yeah. Sheep farmer, sheep farmer, scaffolder, hunter, and hunter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. we redo the? I feel like we need to redo the intro. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Today we have Mike Winnington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sheep, sheep farmer, farmer yeah. hunter, yeah. scaffolder, yes. farmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, wow. but um, yeah. So that was that was upbringing. Um. You know, I went to church every every Sunday. Um, yeah. Heard the stories. Of, so you knew about Jesus. Knew about just... knew about Jesus. Um, and, and certainly the the Jesus that I would the stories that I'd hear, um, I quite liked. Um, okay. But like having the Im- like the the imagery or the yeah, the, yeah. The, the older the paintings or, yeah. or seeing, uh, um, uh, you know, that was a stomach block. And then seeing, um, I mean, my goal in life was to be a sheep farmer. Like I was the typical. Kiwi kid, uh, red yeah. foot rot flats, and wanted to be a sheep farmer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was nothing, you know, more to that. Um, and then probably seeing um, uh, mum and dad getting hurt through the church, okay. in in a sense. Yeah, uh, just through circumstances, yeah. just you know, um, people and and just what they would carry. Yeah, um, and just observing that, I thought, there's no way that wow. I, no way that I want to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so that um, that that was pretty influential uh, on my life. So I wasn't overly naughty, you know, just the typical teenage kid. Yeah. Um, so what then changed? Like, I always went to church, like even in my late teens, just for, out of respect for mum and dad. Yeah. Um, just every Sunday, still went to church, but it was out of a respect to the, for them, not because I was enjoying it or wanted to be there. Yeah. Um, I think that was part of the, the cultural upbringing of yeah. um, small country town. Um, church on Sunday. Church on yeah, Sunday yeah. Um, and, and respect for the for your elders almost, yeah. like um, grandparents. or and, and within where we grew, you know, the, everyone supported your, the, your grandparents or like the older generations were always looked up to. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'd always held that pretty, you know, family was important. So I'd never um, – and when I came to Australia, I was pretty – so I was um, uh, 16. Um, I was about to leave school. So um, and I had a, I had apprenticeship as a high country shepherd in the Southern Alps. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, – and, through circumstances, um, farming had bottomed right out in New Zealand and um, a couple of dad's friends um, had gone out in the back paddock and put a gun to the oh – and, and just ended it all. They couldn't handle the pressure of oh, wow. finances and dad had to do those funerals. And being in a small mm-hmm. country town, everybody knowing everyone, um, I think dad got a, a bit of a fright in the sense that my boys have got no future. Mm. Wow. So um, – he he got an opportunity over here in Australia, and so uh, moved the family over moved, to moved the whole family yeah. over. Um, I was gonna. Mum said, um, Dad said I could stay because um, I had this apprenticeship, um, but Mum was like, No way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so probably the, and so from sixteen to, for a couple of years, probably about three years, um, I really 
held that against my parents because I'd in New Zealand at the time you got your li- a car license at fifteen, open car license. Wow. I'd had I had a, I had my gun license. Um, so you had a gun and a car at fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> And um, that's horrific. Um, <laughs> it's different. I think it's different now, but um, <laughs> it's awesome. New Zealand, but it's different. different and, place. Um, wow. and and so I, I moved to we moved to um, Brisbane um, here in Australia, and right. I, I'd never seen a city so big. Um, and so all of a sudden, you know, I I I, had, I was leaving school. Now I had to go back to school because um, I didn't have a job. Mm. Um, I had to surrender, like the car license. I couldn't drive in ah, over here. No way. And um, and uh, I wasn't allowed to have a gun license um until uh, everything was taken away. Everything from was you. taken away from me. <laughs> my gun, my car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, so everything was taken away. Um, and uh, and so I I thought you know that was that was pretty tough. Like just growing yeah. up, like I oh, my whole yeah, identity, yeah. what I you know what I thought I'd be doing, what I um. And at this point, you're still so you you're still in part of the church world, church family. Your tradition is Christianity, yeah. Um, but you suddenly move to a big city yeah. out of country, yeah. New, um, New Zealand. You you had your life planned out. You had your yeah, as a fifteen year yeah, old does. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but <laughs> yeah, we yeah, do yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you know you could drive. You had the freedom. You had a gun license, like that whole thing, yeah. and you knew where you wanted to go and what you wanted to do. And it was mapped out for you. There were open doors everywhere. Suddenly you up sticks and moved to Brisbane. Mm. What happened at 16 for a couple of years that was obviously you were hating it. What then happened for you to put your trust in Jesus? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So as as I said, you know, um, really struggled through that period. Um, Obviously still going to church. I still respected the, um, um, but probably, um, didn't wasn't doing well at school. wasn't doing well here. Um, and um, and one day um, I was in uh, Mansfield suburb in Brisbane. Um, we we're, were at a church down there, and um, uh, the pastor uh, of that church said, um, "There's one person here today that the Lord's spoken to me about. Um, they need to give their heart to the Lord." Yeah. And uh, and I and I actually thought, well, I hope that person hurries up because I want to go. <laughs> you know, I've I've done my hour and a half here. Um, so that person, and, and it was a, a church where you know the the altar calls could go for a long time. So I was, it's probably I hadn't prayed for a, uh, a while, but through that period, I was starting to pray for that person to give the hearts to the Lord so I could leave. Um, <laughs> and um, and uh, so. Uh, and we all, they also um, they used to put like the deacons or elders on on the doors so the young kids couldn't escape during the um, altar call times. Uh, and and I and remember you didn't have your gun. So I didn't you have my gun. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and my car wasn't parked out <laughs> yeah, in the drive. Yeah. You know, wasn't running. Running. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go go. <laughs> yeah. But I, I was sitting with a, a friend of mine, um, and this he'd made the uh, the uh, the altar call going on for a while. No one had gone forward. Um, and I remember just saying to uh, my friend um, at the time, "Oh, I think I'm going." And he says, "You can't. the The elders are on the on the door." And I'm like, "No, nah, no, I, I think I'm going." Um, and um, at, at some point, um, um, I obviously walked to the front, but I don't remember anything that took place from saying, "I think I'm going" to my friend, to the pastor actually saying. And I'm standing out the front, and the pastor saying, "No, oh, is it you, Mike?" And um, and I turned around in shock, thinking, "Oh, I can't walk back to my seat because that's embarrassing." Yeah. Um, and um, and in that moment, um, he prayed for me, um, yeah. and I I just something had changed. Yeah. Like I, I had so don't get me wrong. Like growing up, I'd been in church. I'd seen how altar calls had done. My dad had done yeah. Yeah. plenty of altar calls. I'd put my hand up plenty of times to to receive Jesus if yeah. Dad was struggling in his altar call just to help him out. Um, <laughs> you know, like oh yeah, Dad, you need a hand. You know, um, so but but it never. That's great. It, That's the kind of stuff. If this was a mega church, that'd be in the press the next day. <laughs> They're frauds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I, I um, um, 
but no, nothing had really sort of yeah. sat in in me. And and then um, I remember someone giving me a Bible afterwards and like, taking it home. Um, and I'd grown up in church my whole life and and realized I, I don't know where to start. Like I don't even know how to read the Bible. I've heard the stories. Yeah. Uh, but. I don't know where they are. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about the Bible. And I opened up. I just opened up. Did the whole open it up. We'll see what happens. And um, and read the scripture in John. Um, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you. <laughs> and amazing. that was the first scripture I'd ever read. Yeah, wow. Well. Um, and that was quite impactful for me. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, really. I've always looked back at that moment as, you know, it was the 30th of 6th, 1991, um, 10.46 a.m. Oh I, I, I just I remember it like yesterday. Like it was that radically changed yeah, wow. um, um, from from where I was probably heading. Wow. Um, so you're not sure what made you walk to the front? I have no idea. Obviously – my legs, but yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my legs. Pastor prays for you. You get a Bible, but then Jesus meets you through through that randomly well, opening up how the Bible. Good's that? You didn't choose me; I chose you. And, uh, and that verse just speaks yeah. to that scenario, then, yeah, it doesn't does. it? Of just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and love that. That's a beautiful story. Um, yeah. So even even now, like when uh, I, I always said I'd never go into ministry, I'd never go work in a church, I'd never do do all of that. And, um, I remember say years later, um, just in a small group, just sharing a, a testimony of, um, my, my life, you know, and then, um, um, talking about the farm, talking about all the, you know, the things, the farm, this, this random old guy came up to me and all I remember of this guy, I've never seen him before, but he, he was just so kind. Like he just seemed like the kindest, yeah, kindest man. And, um, and then he just said, hey, I don't normally do anything like this, but um, can I just share with you what the Lord's put on my heart for you? And um, and he said, you talk, you know, your testimony about farming and wanting to be a farmer. And, um, um, and, and so he said, when you talked of, you know, sheep, I feel like God saw people when you um, when you talked of plowing paddocks. God saw you preparing hearts when you wow. talked about the farm that you grew up on. God saw a church when you. Oh my gosh. Um, when you talked about driving, I went right into in even drenching the sheep. You know, like when you talk about drenching the sheep, God um, talked uh, saw you giving spiritual nourishment, and so um, He just said to me these words that. Even right from a young age, you always wanted to be a shepherd, and God wanted you to be a shepherd. You thought it would be of sheep, but God, oh my God, it would be of of people. That's amazing. Um, when was that then? How old so were you then? I, I was um, I was thirty then. So yeah. um, that had been um, wow. uh, probably twelve years after I'd wow. given my heart to the Lord. Um, and um, and and so just even moments like that through my whole life, like stories of. Um, God preparing or God um, using uh, all that, uh, and wow. then and then that metaphor of of the shepherd yeah. of always wanting to be be that, um, yeah. and that's how now. I what guess an what amazing I'm doing. word! That's so that awesome. guy I've does never, he does he know? I've never seen him again. I've never seen I've ne- I'd never seen him met him up until that point. Yeah, and I'd and I've never seen him again. Like, are you sure he still exists? I don't know. Like, <laughs> like do you know? Uh, it's almost like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I've never. I ne- turned around to get a coffee and he was gone. It was, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's mad. I, I should th- try and track him down because Mark has a cool story of. The, the, wasn't the it your pastor youth pastor? Guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, not even, he wasn't even my youth pastor. Which which story? I've got loads of good stories. <laughs> the one where, what? like, you're a bit of a ratty kid. Yeah, yeah. And then you got back in contact with your previous yeah, youth yeah. pastor or youth The Anglican leader. minister at the church yeah. that I sometimes went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you were like, hey, here I am, like, I'm in ministry, I'm, I'm yeah, in yeah. ministry. I love Jesus, and I'm following, and it blew his mind. Yeah, yeah. He was and like, so, he just assumed that I was, you know, <clears throat> peddling wayward. drugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, yeah. Anyway, but I just love yeah. the idea of maybe that man who – gave a word, probably went away, like we often do when we try and encourage someone in the Lord, yeah. whether it's a believer or an unbeliever. 
got funny sorry um and you walk away thinking like oh, that fellow yeah, definitely right. is because yeah. he's not crying yeah and, or he's not just fall, falling on his knees in humble repentance you yeah. know he's just kind of gone politely thank you that probably meant nothing <laughs> however completely altered the course of your life yeah if yeah. he knew yeah that you're a you know you're past in, Oversee pastoral care, yeah, yeah, and you're a minister. You're a Bible college lecturer. Yeah. Like, how amazing yeah, would yeah. it be for him to hear yeah, that? Right, oh, so good. I love that. So I good. give. A, I was on a, on um, in Byron Bay this last week. I was yeah. on holiday with the family, and um, my wife on the first night rolled her ankle. Oh, like, no. we're, we're gonna go and get pizza. Just stepped off the curb, and like fully rolled her ankle. Um. <laughs> Lay on the ground. <laughs> lay on the ground. People are walking past just as humans, just drunk. Do you know what I mean? With their kids. The kids are crying. They're like, Bobby, Byron watch out with Bobby. Right? Yeah, Byron Bay. <laughs> anyway, I had to go to Woolies to get just this bag of ice. And as um, I had to ask this late this girl, she's probably early 20s, she had green hair, um, where the ice was. And as I was walking her out, I felt Holy Spirit say, go you know i'm like oh no yeah she's from byron yeah. you know she'll call me a bigot <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and i just went back to her and just gave her this word and the yeah, look yeah. she gave me she was like thanks <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah. like god she didn't even cry <laughs> you know what I mean? but, but fast uh, forward 20 years yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. there you go she might be <laughs> yeah. head of pastoral ministry <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. um that is an amazing story uh, yeah that's amazing so obviously it took a long time like from i still was never, you know, I wasn't interested in ministry. Mm. Even even after that? Even No, no after that, yes, for sure. But um, up, up until like when I got saved, when, you know, the Lord came into, like, I, I still yeah. had these, nah, I don't want to go there. Why not? Oh, because of what you saw with your mum <laughs> and dad. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, um, uh, just that, that the, everything that they'd put in and, you know, just some of the disappointments they probably had and yeah. and just witnessing that, seeing that. Um, I, I just thought, nah. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so is that when you got into like trades, yeah. scaffolding? Yeah. So can we drill into that a, a yeah. little bit of like, cause new Christian in, in an environment that's probably not that kind of churchy. <laughs> no. Um, how did that all go? Yeah. So, um, a couple of years after that, I, um, it was well. I actually did Bible college in between. Oh right. In between, actually going on to the trade sector. Yep. So I met my wife. She was at Bible college, and um, and yeah, I saw a lot of like again. And some of those students really at Bible college were reinforced why I don't want to go to ministry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just like oh, yeah, I really don't like these people. Um, you look like my girlfriend as well. <laughs> yeah. hey, um, so um, yeah, she was at my uh, at Bible college with my brother, and anyway, um, we met, and um, and I'd say things like, you know, the, the only reason you're at Bible college is you obviously need help with your relationship with God, um, which didn't really go down very well. <laughs> and um, and I was just in a average job, like I was asked to leave school, um, never finished school. Um, and, um, well, another story there. Um, but asked to leave school. Um, no, I wasn't overly naughty. I, I was quite dumb. Like I was actually, that's why I was asked to leave. Um, that I, they, they basically said that you're not gonna, you're not gonna pass school. So there's no point you being here. Oh, wow. Um, that's harsh. That's, that's really encouraging. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um. Well done. Education and system. I, um, wow. Uh, and I was quite, um, the stutterer. I um, wasn't. Uh, I, they never have to do oral presentations at school or anything yeah. like that. Mm. Um, so I just figured that that you know is I'll take that teacher's advice and find a job that um, I don't really have to speak to people about. You know, I don't have to. I yep. can just do my thing. So yep. that's where I sort of um, was doing a job, bit of a dead end job, having a bad day, and came home one one day and just said to my wife at the time. Um, I think I'll go to Bible college. <laughs> and um, and then I realised, like, well, what did I say that for? And she ran upstairs. We were doing the dishes. She ran upstairs and she'd already had my um, uh, forms filled out <laughs> for me. She'd oh, really? been believing that because she was had a word someone gave her that she'd 
marry a, you know a pastor, or she'd always wanted someone oh to gosh. be in ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I was like the so opposite. Wow. And um, and so then <laughs> this um, is so mad. Like I love how he's underplaying this. Like you're saying it's so you're telling this story so humbly, like beautiful, like genuinely, yeah. really humbly. But it is so evident that God fully marks people and yeah. chooses them yeah. whether they like it or not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, I just find that amazing. <laughs> so, like, to be, I just mean to encourage everyone the fact that, like, your wife really felt like she was going to mar marry a minister. Yeah. He turned out to not be because he was a, a tradie, but he turned out to, to be, be a minister. Yeah. It was just a matter of time, right? Yeah. Because it's sto same story for me. My wife was told multiple times and had the desire in her heart a heart to marry a minister. I was the same when we met and got married, couldn't have been less interested in being in full-time ministry yeah. for similar reasons to you. Um, but then it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's, I just love that. that. So good. I, I, she, she's amazing. Like really like she'd, you know, pray for me all, all the time. Um, and probably with my wife, she was probably the first person that actually really, I felt like really believed in me. Wow. Um, yeah. And even though, um, you know, I was just not having a bar of, I mean, I, I had my own faith. I was, yeah. you know, I had my experience. Um, and uh, anyway, I went to Bible college and again, the two years I spent there reinforced why I really don't want to go into ministry. <laughs> wow. I just, I hated every moment of it. But um, God was kind um, in those, uh, in that time. And then um, uh, we'd move up here to the Sunshine Coast after Bible college and needed a job. So um, I went to the the only other thing a Kiwi can do in that scaffolding, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and Put then your space suit on, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> space suit, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Kiwi space program yeah. <laughs> membership card, and then yeah, so um, got a job as a scaffolder, yeah, um, and then um, as you said, um, didn't think. Uh, that ministry would ever be where I was heading, mm. um, and until I got into the workspace, and um, and I don't know how my um, my boss at the time found out, but he found out that I was a, a Christian, yeah. and I got called into the office um, one afternoon after work, and um, and I'd, I'd sort of been I think I'd been there about four five months working, and um, and I get called into the office and uh, all I hear is this booming voice, is that Winnington? Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm here thinking, gosh, what's wrong with you? You know, like, and, uh, and then I next, and then he said to me, I hear you're a God botherer. And I just sort of didn't know what to say. I was like, well, yeah, I bother him every now and then. You know? like, I don't know. Has he told you? <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, I didn't know what's going on. And, and, yeah. and he said, if I'd known that, if I'd known that, then I would have never employed you. Oh, my wow. gosh. Um, but I've wrung every leading hand that you've worked for in the last couple of months, and you're their first pick on, on, on the team. Um, so you've got your job for this week. And that was it. What, what do you mean? So you first pick on the team. So um, we had different crews that we yeah. would go to. So and we were assigned. So obviously they they liked me. I, yeah. I worked. You know, I worked hard. Um, and uh, and so he'd rung all the leading hands that I'd worked for. So yeah. we're the leading hand of the team, and to see how I was at work. Oh right. I think he was looking after for he a, found out you're a Christian. Yeah. So he was like, looking sorry, for an angle this? to get rid of me. No way. And um. And then he basically just said, "You've got your job for this week." Oh my gosh! And um, and then what, he, implying that you don't have a job next week because I'm a Christian. So if I don't like, if so, he wished he hadn't employed you because he found out you're a Christian, yeah. and then through gritted teeth, he let you keep your job for another week because everyone that you'd worked for said you were great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know if they said I was great, but they liked. Well, that's what they were yeah, 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 implying. Yeah. But um, and uh, and so I just left there thinking, heck. I better work hard this week. <laughs> um, and wow. I just determined at that moment I'm going to be this guy's hardest worker. Like yeah. I'm not. Wow. But he sent a text out to 30, 30, got 30 other scaffolders and told them that um, I was a Christian. And he said that they all have um, his permission to give me hell. Um, <laughs> So that, that is we call that workplace bully. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's what I was thinking is you, you know. Uh, uh, Anyone nowadays would have been like, 
workplace bullying, persecution, or whatever, yeah, yeah. you were like, I'm going to work the hardest out of any yeah, one true, of these yeah. people. I'm going to, I just think that's, a, that is well, a, I needed the job. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 but, but that's it. That is a yeah. sermon on the Mount response yeah. so right that, there. Yeah. That was it. Um, and so uh, the boys, um, uh, they certainly gave me hell. Did, yeah, they gave you hell. Oh, absolutely. Like, so one, one guy came up to me and I hadn't worked for him for a couple of weeks and we're on a job site. Um, high rise, um, and he just came up to me like yelling. He goes, "You didn't tell me you're a Christian. I don't want you to go and preach you around here, um, you know." And uh, he was right, right in my grill, like right in my face. And wow. and I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. Doesn't have his gun. Uh, like uh, nightmare. Nightmare. I'm, I'm nightmare. taking my gun license yeah, away yeah, from me. You know, don't have a car. car <laughs> yeah. He's like, Drive so, off the so my only other response was like, I actually put my hand on my hammer, thinking, "All right, if I hit him, I reckon I've got like a good ten minute start." Like so, I was about <laughs> to swing with the hammer wow. and just give so him, he was aggressive. He was, he was, aggressive. He was really aggressive. Yeah, wow. and just yelling. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know. This this may be a god moment, but I, I don't know what came over me. But I just sort of said to him, um, and I'm I don't really fire up. I'm pretty laid back, and uh, I just got up in his grill and, and just said, look, not once have I ever preached to you. Yeah. Not once have I told you about God. Not once have I told you about about Jesus. Not once have I told you to change your lifestyle. Um, but yeah, I've listened, you've been working I, for this guy. I've just been it. working for this guy. <laughs> and I, just, I said, but I've had to sit here every Monday and listen to you preach to me about how many women that you scored on the weekend, how much alcohol you consumed wow. and how much drugs you take took. So don't you start having a shot at me. And, yeah. I, and not once have I ever told you not to stop telling those stories. Wow. That's... And he goes, no, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we were best mates. <laughs> Wow. How so, to win friends and influence. <laughs> that is amazing. And then so, you were best mates. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, really? and he would ask me, um, he'd, he'd ask me um, uh, a lot about faith and why I believe what I believe. Um, <laughs> and after he'd, you know, so, so Monday he would preach to me and then he'd let me preach to him. Um, so he'd preach to me about the women, drugs, alcohol, and then I'd tell him about Jesus. Oh, and, my wow. gosh, man. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, uh, but, but, most of the other guys, like um, pretty much the culture and scaffolding is during Smoko, they'd go down to the shop, they'd buy a pie and a magazine, um, a girl magazine. <laughs> what uh, do you mean by that? Uh, like the porn, um, pornography. I'm jogging. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, the, like porn, maybe I have to explain. Porn, porn magazine? <laughs> magazine. Do you mean like one of those fashion uh, magazines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so they'd, um, and so they'd always buy me uh, a, a magazine and, yeah. uh, right. and they'd sit there and just open up all the pages. So um, during work every day, just constantly um, having to endure that. And I, I never told them to stop. I never told yeah. them to, um, oh, you know, don't do that or, or anything, which is quite confronting, you know, um, having to look at porn every day and mm. um, in a workplace um, just because my boss had said give them hell mm. and whatever they would do, they, they would try and, trip me up, they'd try and, wow. um, um, you know, they'd, they'd offer me marijuana, they'd offer me all sorts of, yeah, all sorts of things, um, just to try and trip me up. Yeah. Um, and then probably about, um, uh, two months into, into this, um, one of the top leading hands just had gone down to the shop, buy a pie, buy a magazine. Uh, he ended up buying me a fishing magazine and he just threw it at me and just said, oh, I give in. We can't crack you. <laughs> really? And um, and so then I just opened up the magazine or oh, check this out, check that, look at all the fish, you know, like <laughs> um, and uh, and so um, that was um, through that, just how I lived, how I, you know, didn't preach at them, didn't, wow. you know, just loved them, just um, accepted them, um, got to hear their stories. Um, so was it more about you – setting a practical example or were there opportunities to share as well? Um, there there like, wasn't, uh, there was not a lot of thought gone into it, to be honest. Like yeah. I, I mean, if, if they'd ask, I'd, I'd certainly have a conversation yeah. uh, if they'd asked about faith or why I believed what I believed. Yeah. Um, but I never forced that conversation um, until um, 
until some we had a guy at work who um who passed away and um his all his family were in Victoria and um um my boss he, he was the only one up here and, and my boss was trying to organize like funeral arrangements um pretty dysfunctional family so they weren't going to come up they you know and so my boss felt well we need to do yeah. something and so he rang the family and said um not to worry we'll sort everything out um and um just it just so happens that in in the goodness of his heart that he had hired a priest a couple of years ago which was me <laughs> and so he's now telling i hired this priest um and um oh, and so um he's going to he, he'll he'll do the funeral Wow. And um, this is unbelievable. Without asking you, you just yeah, said that. Yeah, without asking me. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you're, you're a scaffolder who's about to lead a funeral. Yeah, to all the guys that um, I'd uh, been working with. And so oh, wow. we get to the funeral, um, and uh, they all turned up in their high vis work gear, and I turned up in a suit, and they were all giving it to me about why, why would you get dressed up? Like I'm like, oh, it's a funeral. And and so they didn't know I was going to lead the funeral and I didn't know that they didn't know and <laughs> I just walked up the front. Where um, was the funeral? Uh, up at uh, Nambour. Like uh, in a church? Local, uh, in uh, um, a funeral home. In a, fu- like a yeah, fu- yeah. funeral home. And, um, and so I um, walked up the front and um, gave it, you know, did the funeral and uh, like, the guys were like, "What the? What do you? You know, like they were, didn't just couldn't of, believe couldn't it. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then we had the wake. We had a wake at uh, one of the local RSLs. Yeah. And my boss got up on the on the bar, and um, banged his glass and and just said, "Right, um, you know, it's been a pretty tough week. You know, a couple of weeks for us as a as a crew. Um, if any of you need to talk to somebody, I've set a table up the back for for Mike." <laughs> and um, and I didn't know this, um, so I just turned up to the wake, and he had set up a table for you, uh, a pastor people, to basically. pastor people, and and then he just said you had to, um, he said so just you know go and have a chat to Mike, just make sure you buy him a beer, and um, <laughs> so I had like I had a line of guys, five guys, just holding two schooners like this. Oh my gosh! Um, waiting to for me to, and I'm just sitting there. So you've um, gone from like a few years back being. Your your boss finding out that you're a Christian, almost firing you, yeah, <laughs> and then texting everyone that you work with to give you hell about being a Christian, yeah. From that <laughs> to now being the employed priest on the to team. now oh being the employed gosh. priest on the team and him giving you an opportunity to, to have a one on one conversation, yeah, that's stunning with every one of yeah. your work colleagues. That's yeah, 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 stunning. <laughs> yeah, so um. And and, from and what that, was the fallout from that, or what, what opportunity did you have I, there? Yeah, like I, um, um, I followed up a whole bunch of guys. Yeah, um, probably for a couple of months. You know, um, you know, just got to sit and listen to their stories about you know, um, scaffolding is it's a pretty rough industry. You know, like a lot of the boys would, um, you know, you'd pay them on a Friday and, and you wouldn't see them to Monday. The wives wouldn't see them. The kids wouldn't see them. They'd just gone out and had benders or, or whatever. Like, so pretty, um, pretty loose um, to, you know, now having conversations of how, how do I sort myself out? How do I, um, a couple of them, um, a couple of them came to church to some, you know, um, wow. just to check it out. Well, wow. um, oh and um, which was, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, but most of it was it was done, um, and, and even today would still have conversations with some of those guys, even though I don't work in that industry anymore. Yeah, well. they, we still have um, uh, if a crisis happens, that's um, yeah. I'm like the priest on dial. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. what's the who's the guy who said um, like always preach the gospel and if necessary use words? Have you ever heard that? Yeah, so the Francis of yeah, Assisi, Assisi, I think. yeah, yeah. It might be one of those ones that. People attribute to him, but it wasn't really him. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, let's but, just say it was him. And I'm, I've I've <clears throat> heard varying opinions about that mm. because, like, well, no, but what people need to know. Mm. However, in your in the industry of scaffolding, for example, if you'd have even mentioned 
one word about oh, faith, you'd have been yeah. torn a bit. Torn to shreds. And, and yeah. And, and probably wouldn't have stayed, and, had the position Yeah, and probably would have been fired. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been a good move to mm. use words. I love the, the part of the story about um, him just throwing the fishing magazine about you. Like, I, it, like I, I can't crack you. I've bought you a porn magazine every day for yeah. however long and you, and they just couldn't crack you. And so eventually he just, oh, I give up. I'm going to yeah. throw a fish in. And, you know, and what you did, you didn't say, this is wrong. They're probably trafficked women. This is, this will be bad for your marriage. No, no, no. You just, you, you know, buy your fruit, they'll, they'll know you. Just by the way that you conducted yourself at work, preach the gospel louder than, anyone could in that position. Yeah. And it sounds like you weren't just doing it by example. It's like when, when it came up, yeah. cause they, you know, in that environment is like you were saying, like if, and I love your perspective on this is like, if you would just come in and be like, right, they know I'm a Christian now. I'm going to take every opportunity I can to share or point out things mm. or whatever. It's just like, it didn't sound like that was really an option in, in that culture, but by winning them over with, um, you know, your actions and like that as an example, yeah. like can't crack you. <laughs> it. Do you think that paved the opportunity then for smaller conversations, which then in the context of your boss probably actually led to that bigger moment of him being like, hey, Mike's really trustworthy. Yeah. He, he was there when we needed him well, and yeah. he'll be there for you if you need him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I, um, I, I think um, it, it went even beyond that too, like in just um, – like now that everyone knew that I was um, uh, the the priest or or, or whatever, yeah. it didn't mean didn't sort of give me any license to um, continue to um, necessarily preach no. to them. Right, but um, it certainly increased the opportunity of them coming to me to ask questions, Knowing questions that you of were faith trusted. and trusted. I, I ended up, um, yeah. So in that, um, I got promoted um, in that job. I ended up um, managing the whole scaffold company. <laughs> Um, so I've gone from the guy that was about to lose his job at the end of the week to now managing the, the scaffold company. Um, and being given a platform to, to pastor people. To do that, yeah. In an RSL. Um, wow. And which was good. When I, when I was in that, that, that space, um, a few of the guys at the church we went to would beg me for jobs. And um, I was always, nah, I'm not employing anyone from church. Like I just didn't, I just didn't want to. Um, I guess all the work that I'd put in over a couple of years yeah, just to right. be full, like because I someone says something stupid or like <laughs> they want now they want to preach at them or now that you know like yeah um so but this one guy Kieran um he he pestered me and pestered me for a job and and so I finally give him a job and um he was just a local uh, this lad in the youth group. And I'd like what my boss did to me, I'd ring up every leading hand that he was on, like, how did he work? How did he go? And they're like, oh, no, no, he's good. He's good. Um, and then um, from that, um, Kieran got another guy from youth to, to work. And, and so my boss actually discovered that the church was a great employment agency <laughs> with all these youth because he said that he didn't have to, they turned up to work on time. Yeah. Um. They they weren't stopping to have cigarette breaks all the time. Um. They um. They they would work back if they needed to. You know. There was no. Um. He he said I'm, I'm not having to try and find them on the weekends because I know that they'll be in church. Oh, oh <laughs> so I know where That's they are. So beautiful. Um, whereas I don't have wi like I don't have wives and girlfriends calling me to find out. You know, yeah. where yeah. And, and he thought that the church became the greatest employment agency wow. um, that he'd ever, <laughs> ever ever stumbled across. And so then from that, um, there was a period of time uh, when we worked there. There was probably um, there's probably about six or eight guys all from the church. Wow. Uh, and so um, it completely changed the. Did that the, change the culture? Culture, of, yeah, of yeah. the place. Yeah. Wow. Even my even the time the boss would would say this is a different different place wow the guy that almost fired you yeah wow and he mellowed like he um he would have conversations about god he would um he really opened up and wow. um we became really you know good friends and and trusted yeah friends you know like in in that sense which was which was nice man you know so um so it, it really did you know just through a little bit of um 
you know, evangelism in that sense of just being who you are or who. And, and I, I probably found that I like that style of Christianity in that sense because I, if I go back to the earlier stories of looking at Jesus, thinking, yeah, he could be my girlfriend if he didn't have the bed, yeah, um, and and not relating or not finding out how that relates, but actually that was a moment for me that. Uh, I realised I, I I could be Jesus anywhere like oh, in, yeah, that, in that yeah, in that in that sense not the yeah. Jesus but no, you know no, like you know, know but you yeah. but I could in a scaffold place with you know or a, it's a messy know, relatable uh, Jesus messy relatable you know into the sharing shed or, or yeah. whatever it was yeah and that was quite definitive for me um, when it came to um, sharing faith talking yeah. about God that I actually, you know, I don't have to talk about this image like this image that's blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, that doesn't relate. Actually Jesus does relate and relates to everybody where they're at. Mm. Um uh, whether it's a scaffold yard, sharing shed, or yeah. or, or whatever. And yeah. sharing faith wasn't as hard as I th- actually thought it would be. You just be yourself. <laughs> yeah. Just be Can yourself. We, yeah. Oh man. Cause I, I feel like this could be so I hope this has been encouraging if you're listening, but just can we can we just sort of pick apart this concept a little bit of, okay, we put out a question recently, which is like, what are your biggest objections when sharing your faith? Or like, what are the walls to doing it? And I think about your <laughs> story <laughs> and hitting a point where, you know, your boss finds out you're a Christian, texts everyone in the company and says, give him hell. Like that's a pretty decent objection <laughs> or <laughs> resistance point to you sharing your faith. And that is a picture of like, I guess, you know, that could be applied to how we feel as Christians in society, maybe like in culture now, of just like, it's not that cool to be a Christian. It's, you know, um, people I think in our audience are in that scenario where it's just like, I cannot talk about my faith at work. Um, you know, not just being ridiculed, but actually just losing my job. Like, yeah. you know, it's really practical as well. Yeah. Um, taking yourself back to that, those initial days and weeks of just like, what am I meant to do? <laughs> you didn't give up on sharing your faith, but you had to be really careful and navigate it. Is there any sort of learnings or <laughs> oh, like how, how would you encourage someone to approach that no, kind of a scenario? For, for me, I, literally every day, like I didn't enjoy my job. Like yeah. I didn't enjoy the persecution. <laughs> I don't even think it was probably that much persecution, but like in the context, yeah. Um, but you know, compared to what others have to go through to share faith, you know, it was was pretty limited. But uh, I just remember uh, every day um, just praying a simple prayer, God, um, I I know I go to work for a natural boss, um, but ultimately today I go to work for you, that you're my boss. And so whatever I do today, I do unto you. And that was all I prayed every day before I stepped in out of my car. Um, just bowed my head and, and did that. And I think that was a, a real help yeah. because even when, um, uh, you know, the guys are uh, showing me uh, pornography or, you know, yelling at me or um, just um, being crass, what, whatever mm. it was, you know, um, that, that was just a great framework for me to go, mm. you know what, um, that today I'm going to work for the Lord and, God, you've got me here in this place for a reason. And right now, I don't know what that reason is other than bringing a paycheck home. Yeah. That's how I felt. Yeah. Um, but were you but looking for like opportunities? No. no? I wasn't looking. Um, or sensitive to them when they came up? Uh, like I'd always uh, – um, uh, 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 when, when we were at Bible college, like, I didn't love evangelism. Yeah. Like that – because at Bible college, I used to, had to go around and door knock, you know. And, yeah, right. That and was part of their – Part of – and yeah. I and that made me a team leader. Um, and I actually would send them out and I'd go and hide in a park <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just get the report and tell the, prince, yeah. tell the lecturers that just, this was our evangelism class, <laughs> this is what we did, what we do today. And I'd make up stories at Bible college about people I'd talk to Oh, wow. Because yeah. I was so afraid of of, of evangelism and, and um, speaking to people, yeah. Um, 
so in some ways, I, it's almost like God threw me into this. I, well, I don't know. But what was evangelism to you like? So what, you're at Bible college and they're like, you're, you know, this week we're door knocking. Yeah. What was the thing in your head that made you hide in a park? And like the thing that you were like, I can't do this. Like, what did you see it being? Or uh, Yeah, uh, like I, I I think part of growing up, school, like us, Leave school. I'm. I'm. I'm dumb. I stutter. I. Um. I'm. I'm. I'm not confident. I. I don't have. I don't have. I won't have the right things to say. Someone will trap me. All that. That type of thing. So I. I was afraid. Like I. I, I just didn't want to be. I'm happy to do one on one, but don't. You know. Um. Yeah. And we have a conversation, <laughs> but it's got to be organic. It's just got to be not not to knock on a door and, hey, do you want to know about Jesus? Um. So I, yeah, for me, I, I incredibly um, fearful. Um, I was really shy, self introvert. Yeah. So I, I didn't, um, I just could not see how this. And I actually used to admire the Jehovah's Witnesses because they could do that. <laughs> yeah. And like, didn't I? Obviously, necessarily agree with you know their their faith, but like they. I did hold them in awe a little bit of, wow, that's courage. They, they actually believe yeah, yeah. what they – I don't. And yeah. so I, I was – even even in my own faith, just wrestling with, with man, I'm not, I'm not even a really good Christian. I can't cheer wow. about God or I can't cheer about um, – I'm at Bible college and I don't even like it. I don't even know why I'm here other than my wife's filled out <laughs> a form one day because I said something stupid like I'll go to Bible college. Because <laughs> yeah. it's interesting, a couple of weeks ago we spoke a Bryce – who is that guy? Yeah. Young American. Yeah. You know, goes out on the street. Very proactive. And f- well, and as it as is Mike, but just yeah, proactive yeah. in a different way, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like no, he would right, yeah. randomly, and he would he literally films himself going yeah, up wow. to strangers, wow. telling them about Jesus, right? Yeah. And so it's like, okay, cool. Um, you are as bold, I believe. And as strategic, just in a a way that God's wired you, yeah. uh, you know, like we've been like the the whole thread of this last season has been God is at work, and He's after the unsaved, and sometimes He's like, "Ah, oh, you, Tim, you, Mike, would be perfect for this person right here." Yeah, because you send the- Bryce to a scaffolding yard, they're going <laughs> to throw him off the building. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but send Mike. Job yeah. done. Yeah, and there were threats. Like I've been. Through. Well, you had your hand <laughs> on the hammer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there were definitely threats of yeah. you know all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and and again, like yeah, I'd, I admire those people, you know, to 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 do that. But yeah. um, I just I think I like I like what you said. You're just wired a certain way. Yeah. Um, and finding that in how you're wired and how God uses that. We don't yeah. all have to be the yeah. same, you know. Um, in that that sense to reach. Yeah. to reach people. I yeah. feel like it's easy to look at your story, and this is with anyone's story in retrospect, it's like, oh, you know, I had a good ending. You had that moment in the pub where, you, you know, you had a line of guys, yeah. you know, ready to talk. But it was obviously like a, a big a big journey and a, and a really tough journey. Um, I think sometimes, and, and this is for me as well, we look at, um, I can't be Bryce and go out on the street. I can't have this big, like a big moment of having to convert someone in one conversation yeah. just seems overwhelming and too hard to achieve. But again, like a thread that's come through our conversations recently has been, I don't know how I'd describe it, like the the leverage of, of tiny moments. Yeah. And that's cool. And whether whether in ways, I mean, you've probably had the the blessing of seeing the accumulation of tiny moments over years yeah. in this scaffolding story um but i think in so many scenarios we don't see you know yeah. if, if we like that guy who had a word for you it's like he you, doesn't you know, know. You didn't see him before haven't seen him since yeah. but don't but it's just like name. and so that in in the context of evangelism it's like um your story mark in in the supermarket with the girl in the green hair it's just like that's one tiny moment and i think we downplay the value of that, I love yeah. the tiny moments thing. Mm. That's great. Yeah, 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 and even the fact that, um, 
of particular people for particular assignments. Like yeah. this, that crew, uh, again, in retrospect, it's really easy to see that was your assignment. Yeah. Yeah. On day one and two, not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. But it's just like, you know, and so I, I don't know what's – what do we take from that? It's kind of like you just got to be yourself and trust that God's at work in this bigger picture, even if you're sort of having a really hard time. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, if you'd thrown in the towel with that crew, it's how just dare, like- Yeah, how dare you? I'm going to the ombudsman and I'm going to report you for workplace bullying versus yeah. I'm going to work harder than any one of your people. Yeah, right. And preach the gospel with the way that I live. Yeah, um, like I love the tiny moments thing, mate. Yeah. I think mean, that's great because, like, I love, good. I love Very that good. you don't know the guy's name that that prophesied and spoke yeah. life in uh, where where you, what you were going to do, how you were going to live your life. And of course, this isn't a job that you do now; it's a vocation. It's who you are. Yeah. It's wrapped up in mm. um, y- your assignment as a Christ follower. And we don't know his name, but we know, but pe- but because of that word, people now know the name of Jesus that maybe wouldn't yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just like I remember someone saying to me years ago can you imagine what we could do <laughs> if no one needed to take any credit um, yeah. or make any money from it wow. and what we t- and 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 a hundred years from now people would talk about that move of God that happened with a certain group of people I can't remember who it was I can't remember what church it was but this amount of people got saved and now all in the name and yeah. not know wow. the name of Jesus. Cause that's where we get tripped up, isn't it? With all the famous pastors and all the mega churches and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, ah, oh, have you read this book by this famous guy? Yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> like yeah. it works for a time. Yeah. But those people either end up failing yeah. or we're just not that person. No. And we don't all have to be a famous preacher. And we yeah. don't, you know, you look at the life of Jesus and it was like, <laughs> I'm yeah. reading it through with my son at the moment. The amount of times he's like, don't tell anyone, don't tell yeah. anyone, don't tell anyone. Yeah. And it's just like, he was just all about the, the tiny moments. The t- yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it now rolls over into, into what I do is like I'm in full-time ministry. Yeah. Um, in that sense of, um, working for the church. Um, but I've still got to be me, you know, in that sense of, um, and I think God has done some amazing things in, in my life. Like, um, with uh, after leaving the scaffold yard, going into ministry, um, I had an opportunity to do a master's degree, and um, so I'm the dumb kid. That, You're the dumb kid with a master's <laughs> now, um, and so uh, it just happened to be doing it through COVID, and I, I really just ended up writing a thesis, and one of my theses is on, um, um, you know, the Great Commission: Go Make Disciples, um, and it, it just happened to be during COVID, so it was quite interesting, you know. So I'll give you the, the, the title was um, of my thesis was. Um, Fulfilling the imperative of the Great Commission during a global pandemic. Oh, in other title. words, how to be how to be a Christian and not suck during COVID. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the the title of it. But I, and you're probably I, the only one who's written that. Yeah, yeah, or one of a few. Um, yeah. But a lot of that also came out from the scaffold yard. A lot of that came from you know the the sharing shed or the yeah. like just seeing um, how do I how do I you know, yes, I'm I'm in full time ministry, but actually, I, I sometimes think I was more successful. Yeah, as a um, uh, in evangelism when I actually wasn't working in the four walls of the yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. actually, uh, you know, uh, sharing sharing my faith and different things like that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I I sort of tried to write a bit about that. Yeah. Um, in that sense, to uh, you know, how do we do that for? that we're all able ministers of the spirit rather than just for the professional oh, one that stands yeah. on a yeah. stage. Yeah. And, and I think too, it's really been something that I, I'm conscious of in the sense that even with church, like I, I feel like sometimes we've often talk about now um, bring your friend to church or bring someone and then the professional guy will speak and then we'll get them them saved yeah and i've sort of really battled with that that yeah. I- idea um in, in in the church world and maybe some of the larger churches where we've got the lights we've got the attractional the, the attractional yeah, yeah. you know you know we've got the professional speaker who's eloquent who can say all the right things and we'll yeah. get them saved but um 
I feel like for me, my role is, so how do I get you to share your faith um, in your workplace? Yeah. And, and to me, I think the greatest missionary force that the, the church has got in our day is, is not necessarily those that we send overseas um, like we used to. Uh, my grandparents were missionaries, and that was a, a big move. But it's actually those who um, go to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh, Thursday, man. Friday. And that's the greatest missionary force that the church has got. Yeah. So what am I doing as a pastor now to equip them to go and fulfill the Great Commission, oh, wow. um, awesome. whether it be in a, at a university, in a school, <coughs> uh, in a workplace? Yeah. Um, and so that that's probably my wow. biggest motivation now wow. in, in seeing that. Um Seen that achieved. There's a book called Canoeing in the Mountains that talks about the fact that the moment that we find ourselves in, um, it, he talks about the, it like the the context is in the 1800s, two explorers were tasked to go and get, find a commerce route, um, and they were professional canoeists and all that kind of stuff. But the maps showed that there was a waterway, but then suddenly they hit the Rocky Mountains. This is the 1800s. They didn't know they were there. And all of a sudden they have to ditch their canoes and learn how to ride horses and speak to the locals and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And he was saying the context is in our day, we used to send missionaries overseas to go and do their thing, but we now live in a post Christian yeah. world, yeah. which means our mission field is here. Like it's here. It's at work. Mm, right. Yeah. And so like that, and you know, if we don't feel like we're, we're being much used to the kingdom. Oh, like, like be nice to your neighbor. Like b do what Mike's done on the, you know, at the yeah. top of a high rise building, yeah. like, ref you know, refuse to re you know, look at porn magazines and encourage them and don't, hit them over the head with a hammer if they threaten you. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I just love that. Oh, I just think man. it's great. Yeah. Oh, Mike, it's been awesome talking no, today. We have to wrap up for yeah. this, but I, I'm feeling... Uh, I love that. I reckon there's a part two. <laughs> <laughs> to be, yeah, yeah, to really? be honest. Yeah. I would, yeah, because I'd love to... There's just that whole, like, how do we... How do we share the gospel as everyday people that I think yeah. I feel like you would just have so much to speak into? That's so what we I feel might, like, yeah. Yeah, we might have to um, get you back on yeah, the I'd microphone. Mike back fun. on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you so much yeah, for, for the chat today. It's so awesome to hear your story. Um, and for everyone listening, I hope that's been super inspiring. Yeah. And um, But just to hear, uh, I think, your authenticity come through um and your love for jesus and just <laughs> being on like a sort of unexpected adventure almost yeah. is, which we all are yeah. in in so many ways yeah. so um i hope that's been encouraging for you guys um yeah. if you've been listening today and um like we always say we're not building channels we're building a movement so like and subscribe and um jump into the comments tell us what you thought of the episode and um we'll see you again next week brilliant Good man. I love that. <laughs> love that. That was so good. I don't know. We just fell for it. So far. Like, um, I just like.